Okay, so we're going to start right here. On the left-hand side, you see a display about custom scales, and it has a scale on the left and a scale on the right. On the right-hand side, you see a score, and it sounds like this. which corresponds to the scale on the left. Also, also, on this right-hand side, you'll see a series of three videos called Machinima, which is a movie made in a 3D platform about a composing in 3D tour. And on the left hand, you see that we're actually sitting in our exhibit in 3D. This is this up here. And we've recorded two live tours so far, one featuring Spiff Whitfield and another featuring Professor Graceful. And then also we posted a machinima of a dance show by Virginia Stella and Officina de Sogne. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Evolving Spaces, Episode 10, Chapter, Projection, Creative Flow, Timing and Plan, in today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting that we continue to feel under a state of continuing creative tension. It's not a bad thing, but it's definitely a tension state. Tension. We also reflect that a benefit of YouTube streaming is that we can use the server recordings directly versus download, which we showed you three examples of just a second ago. And the two scales that we're working with, this is another picture of the one on the left and one on the right, are a new kind of scale pair. And then we've composed two things in them which we're going to play for you, and they kind of blend nicely, we feel. So, the results. For an upcoming new course, we made a globe. Uh, we did the dance show recording for the exposition. And we did, we checked our exhibit stats. We found out that as a couple days ago, we had 1,450 people uh, took a copy of our exhibit gift. That was a couple days ago. Um, the dance video got 20 hits right away, then 30 hits in a second bump. And then a couple days ago, it was up to a total of 70. So that's good. It just, it's a good way to check to see what are people, what's catching their attention. We updated our exhibit info card, sent it out to some people, and that's how we ended up recording some more live exhibit tours. But what we want to focus on now is our um, composing with, uh, with our, what we're calling, we're, we're, gonna, we're calling these our dual scales. So this one here, uh, MDMV stands for multiple dimensions, multiple variables. And this uses the note C, E flat, E, G, A flat, B, which is here on the keyboard. And we programmed our keyboard to not play anything except those notes. But then, then we also, because it's a dual scale, went to this one. And this one is called M multiple dimensions, multiple variables four, because we made a version two and we didn't like it. And so we're skipped ahead to four because we might make a three, you know, all the normal reasons. And this has uh, six notes, four of which overlap. And so we're going to play these for you and uh, see how they compare side by side. But it, we would not be a composing fair channel if we didn't at least talk about briefly what is the difference between these two scales. And that's what the exhibit shows. The recipe for a custom scale is pick a root and pick a neutral, and now you have your anchors. Add one below and one above, and now you have your urges. Add a mode above the root and one below the neutral. Pick from all to make new chords. They'll flow like preternatural. So the, the first thing we're going to play for you uses this arrangement of notes, 
where C and G are the root and neutral. This is a very traditional approach. The B and the A flat are the urge. Again, very traditional. And the E flat and the E are the modes. So it's almost the same as a Do Re Mi scale, except we cut out the other four notes. The Do Re Mi scale has, well, okay, you could say the major Do Re Mi scale has seven notes. And we're using one, two, three, four, five, six. No, the regular one has eight notes. Yeah, the regular do re mi scale has eight. But we digress. Now, the difference is here on the right-hand side for this one, we decided to rotate, rotate this. So the A and the B flat ended up on the right-hand side, and they've become the modes, which are blue. The D and the C, which used to be urges, or whatever they used to be. The G and the C, which used to be roots and neutrals, are now urges, and the A flat and the B, which which used to be urges, are now root and neutral. So it's really intriguing us. We're just really intrigued by it. So the question is, what does it sound like when you compose with one versus the other? So let's find out. So this is the first uh, scale, uh, and it sounds like this. And then the second one, the rotated scale sounds like this. That concludes uh, today's episode. What we really, really, really like about these two compositions is, A, we're exploring the idea of a, a, a dual rotated scale, which is a whole new thing uh, for us. And second, we really had to change what we were doing to make this, uh, for them to sound cool. I mean, this one, the the first one, Again, we said it's a very traditional scale, and for us, a hint of that, this sounds just like uh, the Eurythmics. To us, anyway, or it's reminiscent of that. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's the Do, Re, Mi, Minor, Major type scale. Um, this one, we tried to emulate that pattern. But it can't go down. There's no room for it to go down in the scale. It's a really interesting visual scale. Just look at the giant gap over here. There's no notes on the right-hand side to move around in. They're all shoved over onto the left. You can't use any of these notes. It has to be everything here vertically. Whereas here, you got four on the left and two on the right. Um, and that 
shows up when you work to make something sound good, uh, we found. We also ended up changing uh, the ranges and the instrumentation, but we are very pleased with both of these. So our ideas for next time, well, we have a bunch of ideas for next time. Among other things, we can make an animation of those two compositions. If we were to put the, um, the six-note scale on the left and the six-note scale on the right, we couldn't put them together at the moment unless we added two more notes, in which case they would they would overlap completely and they would have the same eight notes. But that would take us from uh, 20 triads to 56 and from 15 dyads to 28. So we're thinking about that. Um, and to be determined. So shout outs to hybrid tech enthusiast Spiff Whitfield, who's in one of our featured tours, Professor Graceful in the second one, and Virginia Stella for her wonderful dance show troupe. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming.